Hey y'all, are you ready to get started with some painting? I am. I have been too long without painting. I tell you, I'm gonna move you a little bit closer. Yesterday, I worked on this, and uh, you can look for the video if you're interested in that. This is a chalkboard that I made from an art piece, and I'll show you uh, the original of that in just a minute. But this is curing now, and we'll need to have chalk rubbed across it to season it. But this is a traditional look of a chalkboard, and I did this one yesterday. And I did it out of the same exact picture right here that we're about to use today to use the more non-traditional colors. Today, I'm going to use on the frame part of the frame, I'm going to use the uh, DIY Cowgirl Coral because that's very close to the color of the year. I'm going to mix it with a little bit of petticoat pink because I don't want just the solid coral. But when I was thinking about wanting to do the frame in that, what I'm going to use this for is to mark uh, paint and paintbrush prices and things like that out in the in the store area. I was thinking those colors with the black, it would just be kind of too much. So I decided to go with the letterpress gray as the actual chalkboard part on this. So rather than being black in the middle, it's going to be gray in the middle, but it's still going to be, you know, more of a time worn rustic kind of look. I just grabbed up, I still have the good, uh, this is a Dixie Bell OS brush that I have out here from yesterday. And then I just grabbed another chip brush and just a bucket of brushes that I had sitting there to grab out of. I'm gonna mist just a tad with my water. I don't want a whole lot on here because this is glass. This is somebody who worked at a hotel who changed their art, gave me these. And this is just an old fake metal looking frame and a glass piece of artwork. Let's just start with the coral and I'm just gonna use the uh, chip brush dampen it a little bit because the DIY is a clay based paint and it does need water and I'm gonna set a good example today and pour some of my paint out in something to use rather than dipping in and chancing contaminating my batch. The DIY paint does not have a sealer in it always will have to seal it with either like a water-based poly, which they have one, they have something called liquid patina in a clear and a dark, and they have something called big top, which is like a water-based poly. It's very versatile like that, but if I was to let this dry and then not put a top coat on it and spray it with some water, you know, three or four days from now before it's had time to fully cure, it's gonna come right back up and reactivate the paint that's on there. It'll remove it. So you have to, you know, there's a little bit of a learning curve. I'm using a baby wipe now. There's a little bit of a learning curve for uh, what's called wet distressing, which if this was like that one's dry, instead of taking sandpaper to uh, partially distress it, I could distress that right now with baby wipe or with a wet washcloth or whatever. That's a good part of it. Until the sealer is on it, you can reactivate it and reuse it. Now I've got about this much left in my little bucket there. Can you see how much that is? Not much, but man, I hate to be wasteful. But I'm gonna let that dry a little bit and then probably use the same brush to do my pink. And I'm gonna go ahead and use my good brush right here and start putting some letterpress gray in the center. These are called, you get these from like restaurant supply or whatever, and they're called boats. It's called a boat. So I'm getting a little bit on there, not a whole lot, down at the bottom of my brush. These brushes hold a lot, and then we're just gonna get paint right over this glass. Okay, let me see if I can, um, blow dry enough to be able to put a second you know, petticoat pink on this outside part. You absolutely did not want a chance that your under color and your next color would marry in any kind of way or uh, blend to form another color. You would stop after this coat, go ahead and put on a liquid patina, or a big top, I don't have a big top sitting here, but go ahead and put on a top coat, not a wax, 
but go ahead and put on one of the other top coats and that would seal this color in so that it would not blend with the next color you're putting on. So now I'm going to go ahead and put some of the petticoat pink over the cowgirl coral and I almost want to dry brush this on. I'm not wanting it to take over and be the main color. I'm still wanting the the peach color to be my main color. So what I'm going to do is dip here in the lid and then tap it on my thing there and let's just get a little on here. Try to get a little of it out so there's not a lot. I'm going to go back over this, around the edges this way, trying to hit those high points but leave some of the lighter in there. See how fast that draws? So you won't have to do anything to this after you get the three coats of paint on here and you let it cure and you rub the chalk over it to season it. That you just rub the chalk, lay the chalk on its side and rub it all over the whole thing, getting a little bit of chalk everywhere. And that little bit of chalk will sink into the paint, the sort of the pores of the paint itself. And then you just take a dry rag and wipe off the excess chalk then make it to where any letters that you put on there don't sink in and then when you try to take that wipe that off they're stuck in there but if that was to ever happen and you uh then you just take another coat of paint and you paint over it and there you go you can change the colors of this at any time And I hope I don't regret this part because I'm going to, you know what I'm gonna do it with. I got this one in the gray already. This is where I'm gonna do, similar to how I did that one, get a little bit of the gray paint just on the edge there. Try to wipe off the excess. And you know what, if I don't like this after I do it, I just let it dry and put another coat of the petticoat pink or the petticoat pink or the uh, cowgirl coral on top of it. But I like to, I think it gives a good finished look to things when you frame them in. And that's what kind of what I'm doing right now is framing this in. And you can frame in from the inside as well. Let's see if I can do that. I kind of like that. Let's see if I can do it going up this side. That shows a little bit more of the definition that's in the frame, but I'm not wanting to go all over it like I did that one and have the raised parts be gray. I want those to stay cowgirl coral. But here you go. It will dry now. I'm going to let this dry naturally because I have to go do a little store work. And then I'll come back and put one more coat going in the other direction of the letterpress gray. And then I'll either put wax or probably liquid patina because I have it right here on the outer edges of it. And then I'll probably leave it sitting in here on my work table. But I hope y'all enjoyed it. And I'll put my uh, DIY um, affiliate link in the comments. And I appreciate, you know, even y'all going and looking at that. That helps me out and, you know, lets them know that I'm working hard to, you know, help people learn cool things about the paint. <laughs> Thanks. Have a good day. Bye.